Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today we're going to tackle that most terrifying of items, a blank sheet of paper. No. <laughs> we're actually going to go over how you can paint uh, gems, lenses, uh, anything like that which has a sort of reflective appearance. We want, to, we want to fake out some of these things. But I wanted to quickly use this sheet of paper to sort of demonstrate one of the principles because the colors you're going to use aren't really going to matter all right they are going to be specific to whatever it is you're painting but for the purposes of the actual technique it's universal whether you're painting a lens a gemstone anything like that so what i'm going to look at is we'll quickly grab our little sharpie pen here and let's say for a second you've got a nice ordinary square shape or rectangular shape like you would on a chimera for example and we want to make this look as though light is coming into it and sort of reflecting some of the color that it has naturally. It's not too difficult. What we'll do starting off, starting off, starting off, <laughs> sorry, is you want to put one simple color over the whole thing. So I might use, for example, I'm going to start with corn red on mine. Then what we'll do is sort of draw a vague L shape. Okay, and fill in some of it with a brighter red. So second color. And I might use over corn red, I might use Mephiston red because I want a, a fairly sort of gradual transition of color before we get to some really high points. Then we'll do another littler shape and that'll be color three. And I might use for that something Let's grab out here Evil Sun Scarlet. And in that way, we're going to get a gradual transition of color where it looks like the light is coming in from a certain angle and giving us this vague three-dimensional effect. It's never going to be completely accurate, you know, depending on where the light is coming from. Now, the same thing is true as well if you're doing a lens or a gemstone, okay? Let's say this area up here, your light is coming from. So we're going to start off Let's just say we're going to do red again, okay? Like I said, the colors don't matter. You want to draw, or paint, sorry, sort of a half shape like the moon and leave this area, this is your first color. So this bit in here, this would be your corn red. And then the second bit would be your Mephiston red or your next bright color. And then same thing again, your third color. And so we're getting that shift up. Then... A little twinkle of white at each point just to sort of finish off that look that we've got a lens or something glossy now the same thing happens too say you've got a gemstone now these are all over the place on Eldar and again the same principle start off with your first color then your second and your third okay with a little bit of ping ping light in either corner. Now that's all well and good. And it looks simple enough when I'm doing it <laughs> on a sheet of paper with no model in front of me. But what does it look like when we actually put it into practice? Well, let's get our brave volunteer on the table. So I've got here a, a Death Strike missile launcher. The missile obviously off somewhere else at the moment because it's not really particularly important to what we're doing. Now I've had this for two years <laughs> assembled and that black undercoat. So today it's finally getting a little bit of paint. So I've got my corn red and same as always I'm going to thin it down with just a little bit of water on my palette and then we'll just get in here and we'll start off with this one here on the front, this little window. Easy as, we'll cover it all over in corn red. Nice and simple. Now for my second color I'm actually going to go straight to Evil Sun Scarlet because Personally, I like quite a sharp transition of color for this. So we'll start off and we'll go up into the top corner here. And just paint a line down. And then from the other side, we'll paint in to meet it. And then we can just build that out a little bit. So you see, I don't want it to be a perfectly straight line because I do want a little bit of curvature into the corner there. And I can go in as far as I like with this, but I want to be quite sparing with it. So that's where I'm going to, yeah, that's where I'll stop with that. Now from there, I'm going to go straight up to Fire Dragon Bright, which is bright, <laughs> to put it lightly. 
So what I'll do is, same thing again, I want to start from one corner and just carefully draw in just towards where I want that light to collect and give me that sort of reddish color. Now I'm not going to go the whole length of the window here, I'm just going to sort of start halfway and paint in towards that corner. So I get a nice sharp little bit of orange in the corner there, which looks like the extreme point where that light is hitting the inside of the, the lens or the window or what have you. And then by far the easiest part, we'll just get a little bit of white and a tiny wee dot blip, in each corner blip, to give us that neat little glowy reflection. Now this bit is optional, but I always like doing it because I think it adds a little to the finished product. Just get yourself a little bit of art coat or any old gloss varnish and just gloss in that area. And that'll make it nice and shiny and it'll help sort of bring those colors together, make them look like they're a little more natural. But it's as easy as that guys. So nice quick tip and one that can be applied across a dozen different things, okay? The, the basics of it is literally just three colors. Now I like to be quite sharp with my transitions, but once they're on the table, look at that. I mean, the tank itself is obviously not finished, <laughs> but the window itself, that's one way of doing those uh, you know, lenses, anything that needs to glow. So there you have it, fellas. Hopefully something there was useful and uh, go ahead and try it out on something yourself as well. If you like, try planning out ahead of time and just try doodling on a bit of paper for a while. It will help figure out the shape you want to be painting on.